Good day, YouTubers, and thank you for tuning in to the Dice of Battle with you. Today, of course, is going to be another warm and humid day, of course. But yes, it's also going to be water themed toys, so yeah, let me just go ahead and find those toys. Now, originally, I was going to be doing something very car related. I was going to complete my Screamers Crossland car, but sadly, um, I'm going to push it towards like maybe Tuesday or tomorrow, because obviously. Um, I haven't got that much sticker component, so sorry about the delay there. If, I, if you were going to be looking out for the Crossland car, I can't do that at the moment. I might as well do that at another time, uh, covering this in whole tons of detailing, and I will make this car look more so perfect than it's got it done so far at the moment. But anyways, I'm going to be di delving into well, what it looks like to be basically um, British water thing birds. British water birds, and we've only got three of those. Two of those are black-headed gals, one of them is of course, well, a very different set. And look at that, we've also got a very cool looking rat here, but we'll take a look at the black-headed gals first. Now, I wonder which one should I choose? I think the one on the right should probably go for this one here. Um, this one here costs about um, £16.99. It's a flip up origami British wildlife collection toy. As always, as per usual, um, it's a swimming, wa wintering, black-headed girls at Mudflat Estuary Tidal Waves Trail Pack. Ain't that the sequel to what I've done with you know that set with the common sand pipers I did back then last year's August when I made well let's just say a trio of black-headed girls and a cu couple of common sand pipers. That was actually kind of amazing. I do miss the flapping birds, which is quite sad, but. And there's also quite a bit of a disadvantage to the set is that get ready for the fish. Um, look at that. They've all haven't been glued in. Ours is not simple to add some glue. I mean, ours is not hard to just add glue onto the fish. So I might as well just add glue onto it and see if it'll work. And I just have to add some glue firmly. But overall, it just seems to be quite very different. And hey. That tends to be quite the hassle sometimes when you're not out of glue though. I mean, how frustrating would it be though just to not add glue onto toys, which is just, you know, frustrating in a sense. But anyways, I might as well have to come in and do a bit of re-detailing because obviously um, the fish in this set, uh, they are based on pilchards, but they're not as great as what I think of. But um, Remembering it's a vloggers type video on YouTube, so I gotta show things on camera if I'm doing this type of video, and I need to remain myself seated or remain my face like that. So it's very important whenever I'm doing these videos on YouTube. That's the rule. Okay, we've got some pilchard. Uh, best thing about these fish is that they've got a very distinctive yellow line. Uh, of course, is that's what we all know about pilchards, and they've got like a bluish greenish color combination. This one here does look like it doesn't have that much in the way of blue. But we'll take a look at the lug worms next. Now, would have never thought I'd be seeing those at the coast. Well, I've actually seen lug worms before. It's just that I would have never thought I'd be seeing those guys there because I didn't know these guys existed. So, um, these guys can be found in the sand, hence the name sandworms. They're also known as blow lag... Oh, sorry. Uh, lug worms. I thought I was going to say lag worm, but not lug worm, as I just said it. Now, of course, yes, these guys look pretty nice if you went to the coast. Then we've also got some seashells, which look like that. I think these are whelks. I believe the pilcher that came in the set, which are the cup, the two fish that came with this set, I'm pretty sure, um, they're like the ones that are, well, basically, um, seen during high tide, and then they're being washed away and swept away to shore. Uh, these works look fairly nice. Well, let's take a look at the black-headed gals. Next, we have exactly about four adults. So I might show you those. And all of them look fairly similar because obviously, well, as you can tell, sorry for the rhyming, eh? <laughs> a bit of a pun sort of rhyming, eh? <laughs> uh, of course, is they've got that beautiful looking uh, white face at the front with brown markings in it, but they literally just say black headed gal, which doesn't matter for me because maybe it's to do with it's something to reduce time constraints and all that stuff. 
And there's another one there. In fact, um, they all look fairly nice. I'm also working on a play set as well that might also incorporate cars as well, but doesn't include cars. There you go, it's another black headed girl set. And I've also got first winter black headed girls, because, you know, that's what they all look like with those black tail ends. You know, with the brown going on the wings there. Got a beautiful orange carrot like beak with a black tip at the front. Or grey tip actually, because it's more of a cheap down version of black. And you've also got the same markings, which is pretty obvious if you ask me. Hey, but I think, um, actually, that's weird. There's a SUV has taken a dive here. Sorry about that. that car's taking a blooming dive. Uh, for no unexpected reason. Okay, there you go. That looks fairly nice. There's, you can see the brown streakings on the wings. I tell you what, when they're this young, I tell you what, by the next year or so, um, and when they come into light, you know, when they come out from their first summer plumage, well, that black tail end is gone. And in fact, you know what I'm actually thinking of? Uh, it looks okay, but this one, uh oh, that one's got. Well, looks like someone's just missed out their grey, silvery back. That's not very good, I think. That doesn't seem to work. I mean, what's up with products these days? I mean, it's so weird. I mean, how many times do I think I've seen products being, you know, left off with such detailing that are not even added? And, you know, same with the sardines as well. How come they haven't been adhesived to make it look like as it is? as if it were the fish. I mean, give me a break, guys. But it's just that. So I have a bit of an early morning rant about the loss of detailing and the cost of it. Oh well, this you are saying. There's no law making against the profit. Well, with a few penalties of basically looking out for the fish, not getting their two um, separate, you know, thingies or heads connected together, or should I say, um, I don't know what it is, but to uh, assemble the fish together into a 2D slash 3D model, like a semi 2D model, made up as a 3D model, um, yeah, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, there's no law against making a profit when you have detail being lost, because detail costs money. In fact, a lot of detailing does cost long, a lot of money, because I often get that hearing of the devil is in the detail. Mm, maybe that is something I could look out for. But hey, let's go ahead and take a look out for the um, other black-headed girl product. Of course, yes, as I was saying before, when young birds have a young tail end, um, by late summer, th that detailing would have gone completely off and would have been uh, faded, I suppose. Hey? But anyways, this is another product we'll be looking at. This is a £15 set. It's another Fifth Origami British Wildlife Collection set. It's a swimming black-headed girl's transition... Oh, I think, does it say transitional or transition? Yes, yeah, it actually says transitional. I have a look closely again. I think it says transitional, but I'm not sure if you can see the A and the L. Feeding Frenzy 12 pack, that's what it's called. And there you go, there's the back of the packaging with a wintering black-headed gal. Well, it looks like it's about to devour a double beef slash cheeseburger. Ain't that very unhealthy? I'm just quite curious about the burger. Because obviously I'm quite into it. Well, not really that much, but hey. It's all down to that Big Mac downsizing video that gets me all the time, right, eh? Okay, so we've actually got two different colours of, of the same octagonal pieces, which look like that. Okay, so if I hold the lighter ones here, which are orange in colour, they're meant to be the tops of the beef burger. Here you go, the buns, as you can see. And if I grab those ones there, which are much browner than what we've seen before. Um, sorry, my lips are twitching now because I can feel something weird, eh? <laughs> um, the orange um, one looks like this. Uh, but those ones there are brown, uh, which would probably explain why they're based on beef burgers. And I'll probably say that they're basically based on steak, I guess, so. Eh? And you've also got a couple of cheese, which looks like that. I wonder why they're square shaped. Can't they be in a different sort of design, eh? I don't know why. Yeah, but what I might do is I might assemble my double cheeseburger. And hey, this is only going to be quite different. I mean, wouldn't that be too bland if I just add everything together, eh? Hey? Maybe I can make a burger set and maybe make billions and billions of pounds. Yeah, you know, I could become a mega tuber and make burgers and stuff. 
But hey, look at that. What do you think about this burger, guys, eh? Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, no. Yeah. It doesn't taste nice. Right. Anyways, let's take a look at the black-headed gals, which will, which are the main critters that will devour the double cheeseburger. We're going to take a look at those three first. They are, they are the wintering birds. Unlike that very other black-headed gal set, look what they have. Apart from the forward-facing C-shape, look at their distinguished red lines. Look at that. They've actually got a beautiful-looking uh, eye ring, which is pretty much red in colour. And if I show you to you closely, there you go, that's what they'll look like. And um, I'm just checking for wing details as well, making sure they've got details on both sides, actually. I suppose that, hey, um, you know what, I'm just so glad that, hey, I can actually add some very cool looking details into origami birds. And I mean, that's not very bad for such a interesting um, sort of toy, of course, eh? And let's take a look at the summer plumage black headed girls next, because you know, obviously there's those guys there will probably be next near next to anything. Well, of course, is uh, like with the wintering black-headed gals in this set, they have got like forward-facing C shapes, but also the red eye rings as well. It's like they have the red halo right over their eyes and such. Quite weird, if you know what I mean. But uh, it looks actually quite the part of the black-headed gal, and despite the name. It's more like chocolate brown heads. Um, it's a summer plumage, there you go. They've all got their seasonal bracketed names. I'm trying to look outside because the sun is pretty warm, or if not hot. Of course, yeah, so we'll take a look at this here. There you go, there's the brackets over there with the seasonal names. And yes, by August, they'll transform into this. The wintering plumage, yay! Of course, yes, I've got a funny feeling that, hey, that's what they all look like. And there's another one there as well. It's quite crazy that we're getting a lot of black-headed gals so far, and even with the Flappin' Birds toys, which sadly have died and, you know, and has been discontinued as a toy range, um, sadly, that would probably overwhelm flip flap sales. You know, in the way on how I make flip flap products and all that stuff like that one, hey? I'd love to make batches of products like this, but sadly, I just... I think that would be way too much, because all I need is a very lavishly and legitimately done uh, printer. I would rather need a printer, or maybe wait for the next toy generation to come up and... <laughs> no, not sneeze, but more like um, photocopy as much artwork pieces like that. Maybe I can make batches of these guys. How about that one, though? <laughs> make batches of those. Hopefully when I'm old enough, I might go and get myself a coloured printer. But the last product we're going to be taking a look at in a set is... The Flipper Origami Butterfly Collection 7 has 99 set Brown Wrap um, Bread Break Catch vs Waterfowl Pursuit Fight Pack. And it costs about 7 pounds 99 or 8 pounds. Look at that, there's a freaking Mallet Drake or Duck that looks like... It's probably a male, of course. And I can't see its blue wing tip, I think that's what they would normally have. Um, yes, it's on its Eclipse plumage because of course, yes, there's no bottle green heads this time, or clear silvery greyish and burnish looking bodies. Of course there's a Canadian geese who looks really ticked off because there's a freaking rat on the top though who's actually got a piece of bread. Almost looks like one of these rats out of New York City who carries like a pizza, but this time in the United Kingdom they've got freaking birds in their mouth. How about that one, hey? There's the back of the packaging. Oh look at that! Into the water! Oh, yep, yeah, pursued by ducks and geese. How cool is that? But will he make it until the end? Look at that! Actually, there's something quite weird. Uh, this is Ducky. I guess that could be female, of course. There's the blue wing tip. Actually, I could probably add the... What's that called? Um, there you go. It's actually not a wing tip, but what's that one called? Oh, speculums! Got it! The word speculum. Sorry. they got, like, a blue speculum here. That's what these mallard ducks are well known for, hey? Well, it's almost like winning the willows, if you ask me. There's Ducky, and there is Ratty. Although Ratty's probably more like Volley, because Ratty is actually based on the water bowl, which is another rodent species, but it's more native to the UK than what rats are like. Obviously, right, let's take a look at the rats. Um, there you go, that looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, that looks pretty... It almost looks like Rattata from Pokemon, if you think of it, eh? I was going to do the whole New York City joke, but then I thought, that wouldn't be too poisonous if you ask me, right? <laughs> no, I don't know. And look at that, the rats. Looks like it's bad to, um, looks like it's actually, um, I can actually, got a bit of itchies in my nose, so the rat is gonna twitch with its tail, and 
probably wipe something very itchy on my nose, all weird and, and humiliating as that. And there is a piece of bread. I mean, unsurprisingly enough. So what do you do with bread in the lakes? You just chuck them straight in the bin. Because obviously, bread is bad for ducks. Or should I say, maybe just, you know, make as many, you know, bread sales and all that stuff and become like a mega person. Uh, but yes, um, that look almost looks like Rattata from Pokemon, doesn't it? That little brown rat, that looks pretty cute. Actually, I need to look at the eyes, because the eyes look kind of, sort of, very weirdly distorted. It almost looks like, pretty inherently dirty or something, I don't know. But anyways, let's take a look at the waterfowl. Uh, we'll take a look at the darks first. This is a male Eclipse Plumage Drake duck. Obviously, that's what they would look like in summer, when the breeding season is over, of course, until, like, autumn time, where they'll be molting into their beautiful bottle green head feathers and also their silvery grey feathers as well they'll be turning those back and yes that's what they would normally do <coughs> um, funny enough it would have been so much better if they had like bluish uh, speculum detailings on the wings they would have been so much better rather than having like you know just having a bland design on the outside uh, you know on the insides they've got that okay so if I show you the whole wing detailing it will look pretty familiar you ask me same with this female here and actually in the female, uh, in the artwork, let's look at this female, it's not really that female. Ours is a female. That doesn't look very feminist. If you ask me, I guess I'm sounding quite sexist, but, um, or maybe the whole orange slash greyish beak is another clue. And look at that, I've got a duck in my head. How cool is that? How foolish am I, do you think? Go away. Anyways, oh wait. <laughs> Apart from actually swimming in the water, you can actually throw these ducks and make them like paper planes. I didn't realise that one, eh? Hey? Oh my crikey, how did I actually do this? I've never noticed um, those ducks would become paper planes. <laughs> I didn't realise those ducks could also become paper planes. Anyways, without any ducks attacking you, you have about this Canadian goose. Just a very lonely and solitary Canadian goose. He suddenly has actually taken a dive from my hands and stuff. Crikey's, and there you go, there's the other side here of this Canadian goose. Very mundane species, and there you go, there's the white chin strap on the top. You know, you know, chin strap begins with C, and so does Canada. There's the old saying here, of course, eh? Uh, it looks pretty awesome, that Canadian goose. It looks pretty nice and on how a Canadian goose should look like. How interesting is that? And without being a total goose, sorry for the pun, eh? <laughs> I might as well just put them back to where they belong. Of course, yes, it's so nice to have like some weird set. Mind you, I could literally make all kinds of British wildlife collection stuff, but hey, I think this whole video is done and dusted. So, anyways, if you really enjoyed in this whole video on YouTube, about British water birds, please give this video a like, subscribe for more for videos in the future, and until next time, thanks so much for watching, sorry for the loss of detailings on that first product, and bye for now!